Dear Representative Stockman, Obviously it appears that you have been raised by wolves and not by decent human beings because I, if you had been raised properly, I would not have to explain to you proper decent behavior, how to be polite, and how to have common courtesy. Case in point, when you asked a scientist a question, it is considered by the majority of humanity to be a proper, polite, courteous, common sense behavior to let the scientist answer the question you have asked. When you bellow and yell and try to drown out the answer that the scientist is giving you, that shows you not only do not want to know the answer, you do not want anybody else to hear the answer either. Case in point, this clip here. And um, I went to uh, Maryland and uh, asked repeatedly two things which I've never been able to get answers on. Note that he is asking Dr. John Holdren questions about climatology of which the representative could find the answer in literally thousands of places within seconds using Google Scholar but he went to Maryland and he couldn't find the answer to his two questions. Let's find out what the two questions are. One was, I said, what ended the Ice Age? It depends on which Ice Age you're talking about. When you're talking ice ages, you're not talking glacial periods. There's differences there. There's different cycles of orbital mechanics between Earth, Sun. Jupiter plays a small perturbation part, and even Saturn plays an even smaller part. There's a 22,000 year cycle in there. There's a 44,000 year cycle in there. There's a 100,000 year cycle in there also. The Ice Age doesn't make any sense. You have to specify which one. The answer is orbital isolation, the amount of sunlight striking the Earth, and how the Earth is tilted at that epoch together with some other orbital mechanics, all of which have been known for decades. There's a very fine paper on the subject, which I'm going to put a link to in this video description down here. Note number one, not knowing the answer, not getting an answer for that question does not make any sense because that answer is literally available in hundreds and hundreds of places. A hell of a lot of astronomers, cosmologists out there, cosmophysicists out there can tell you exactly what ended, quote, the end of quote, ice age. This is not a mystery among scientists. And the lead scientist at NASA said this. He said that what ended the ice age was global wobbling. Yes, and he is 100% correct. Over tens of thousands of years, the Earth's tilt does wobble. This has been known for centuries. A United States representative should know this fact. Also, the cycles involved change their, their periodicity now and then because of the conservation of angular momentum. Continents on Earth drift around over long periods of time. They're doing it right now, by golly. You can't pass a law telling them not to, by the way, like North Carolina. Where was I? Continents drift. Angular momentum when continents' masses go towards the pole or go towards the equator. The wobble of the planet changes a little bit. So the the 22,000 year cycle, the 44,000, it's probably more like 43,000 year cycle, the 100,000 year cycle, 
change their periodicities every now and then by a few thousand years. Like I said, high school knowledge. Why does a United States representative not know these facts? That's what I was told. This is a lead scientist down in Maryland. You're welcome to go down there and ask him the same thing. So on my second question, which I thought was an intuitive question that should be followed up, is the wobbling of the Earth included in any of your modelings? And the answer was no. Yes, none of the world's climate change models include the change of Earth's tilt because we've only been pumping greenhouse gases into Earth's atmosphere for about 200 years. The tilt of Earth's axis in relation to the Sun and other orbital mechanics takes many tens of thousands of years to change Earth from a glacial period to an interglacial period or back again. That 200 years or so is so tiny and so insignificant it can't be modeled. It has absolutely no effect on human-caused climate change anyhow. It should also be noted that if humans had not been pumping greenhouse gases into Earth's atmosphere for the past 200 years or so, Earth would still be cooling right now. Earth would not be warming. It would be cooling. If the representative actually gave a shit about the answer, he wouldn't then engage in the behavior that he is now going to be shown engaging in. That is trying to silence the answer to the question he asked so that nobody can hear the answer. So how can you have wobbling of the earth, cooling the earth, and not be included in any projection? That's one is for the books that I'm a little bit confused about. That's right, he's a little confused, even though a bright 12-year-old could understand it. How can you take an, an element which you give to the credit for the collapse of global freezing and into global warming but leave it out of your models? I'm, I'm a little bit puzzled because we still don't have any uh, metrics I understand of what, how to determine global wobbling. The metrics have been known since the time of Isaac Newton. Which I didn't know. Uh, uh, was part of the reason for the end of the Ice Age. The last thing I asked him, which I can't get answers to, is, um, you know, how long will it take for the, for, for the uh, sea level to rise two feet? I mean, how is it possible that a United States representative does not know that there is no such thing as the sea level? There are sea levels on planet Earth different bodies of water around the planet have different sea levels chiefly due to their thermal components warmer water is higher than cooler water there's not a perfect sphere around the fucking planet sea level rise changes not just in like big huge regions like um, North uh, America, along the coast, it's all not just the same sea level rise. Along the coast, there's different levels depending on the coast. Where warmer waters come in, for example, uh, going from the North, uh, North Pacific and down from Washington to Oregon to California, and down into uh, off of New Mexico and Nicaragua and then heads west again. The warmer water will raise the sea a little bit and when it hits the cooler water it will lower a little bit. The sea level does not make any sense. If you're talking global average sea level, the next 30 or 40 years should add about, oh, I don't know, a foot and a half. The current rate is more than three millimeters per year. That rate is increasing. And given the fact that the Greenland ice cap and Antarctic ice cap is melting, are melting, both of them at a astonishing 
rapid, unprecedented rate. It could be a rise of, of more than a meter by the end of the year 2100. A United States representative should damn well know these facts. Think about it. If your ice cube melts in your glass, it doesn't overflow. It's displacement. I mean... Put a block of ice on your table and it melts. What happens? This is the thing, some of the things that they're talking about mathematically and scientifically don't make sense. Here's a hint, Representative Stockman. If a scientist or many thousands of them tell you something and they all agree and they're all telling you the same thing and it still doesn't make sense, I submit you're a moron, not them. Greenland ice cap on land. Our Antarctic ice sheet. A hell of a lot of ice on land. When that water, when the ice melts, it turns to fresh water. It flows into the ocean. The ocean rises. Is this not something that you can comprehend? If you put an ice cube in your cup of coffee and it melts, it doesn't raise the level of the coffee in the cup because it's not on fucking land, you fucking moron! Seriously, how is this not fucking obvious? But I just, I'm wondering overall, when you have a model and you say we're going to leave out the most important impact of that model. Okay, I give up, Representative Stockman. Which scientist specifically has said that she or he is going to leave out the most important component of climate in their models. Which scientist has said that? The two chief components of climate change and climate models, actually there's three, solar output, or I should say solar output, Earth's atmosphere, Earth's oceans. Those are the three largest components of climate on Earth. The glacial, interglacial, orbital mechanics and the change of Earth's tilt, the wobble, totally, completely insignificant over the time frame scientists are looking at. And uh, with that, I'll let you respond. But if you have a model of global wobbling, please let me know. That's right. And if a climatologist ever did that, if a climatologist ever put into a climate model or a climate change model the change in Earth's axial tilt in relation to the sun, her or his peers would bust up in hysterical laughter because over the span of what we're talking about since the Industrial Revolution, since humans have been modifying Earth's climate, You'd have to do a decimal point, maybe 15 or 20 places before you would get to a number that represents the, the um, temperature change that such a tiny, insignificant amount of wobble over the past 200 years or so would represent. It is utterly pointless to add that to any climate model. It's just ridiculous. Asking a scientist to do that is also utterly asinine. And let me know when, how long it takes the seas to rise two feet. Under business as usual scenario, approximately 40 years. Why do you want to know? Congressman Stockman, I'm not going to talk about the economy of Spain. That's not my expertise, but I am going to talk about the science and, and help you a little bit with global wobbling to start with. Global wobbling, which refers to changes in the Earth's tilt and orbit, 
takes place on characteristic time scales of 22,000 years, 44,000 years, and 100,000 years. It is very slow. It brought us into ice ages. It brought us out of ice ages. When you take global wobbling into account, as I've already suggested, we would be in a cooling period now. But the warming inflicted by human activities has overwhelmed the effect of global wobbling. Yes, by several orders of magnitude, human activities, including and chiefly greenhouse gases that we have been releasing into Earth's atmosphere, completely, totally, by many orders of magnitude, overwhelm any climate forcing involved in the past 200 years regarding the wobble of Earth. Now, Representative Stockman will try very hard to drown out the scientist and his answer so that nobody can hear what the scientist is saying. We all know why he's doing that. He doesn't want the answer to be heard. But, but I was you don't not, to, wait, wait a minute. None of the models have global wobbling in it. Is that I'm, about to, I'm about to explain why. The reason why is that global wobbling is a tiny effect on the time scale of a hundred years in which we try to run these models to understand what's going on now and going on soon. It is no, so sir, small all, without it is so small that you don't no, need to put it in. No, no, you can't say it had a global impact and then it's small both. Those it had a global impact statement. over periods of tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. I say We're talking hundreds about of decades. thousands of years to end. Ice How long did the ice age take to end? Ice, ice ages went on for hundreds of thousands of years, in some you, cases for Mr. millions, Stockton. and they ended over long periods of time as well as a general matter. Uh, doctor? And, and sorry, I don't mean to step on anyone. It just says the chaos of today, everyone's going to be running on to other hearings. Mr. Weber. Thank you. Um. The summation. Representative Stockman ask questions which he damn well should have already known the answer to because they're available within seconds to anyone and everyone that has internet access to should have known the answers he made false assertions under the pretense of asking some questions and then when the scientists tried to answer the questions that he actually asked he tried to stop the scientist from answering those questions. 